Ladies and gentlemen, let's try gaming to the com video. The RX 480 is finally here, and in this video, I want to go through the architecture of the card, and also want to delve into a couple of benchmarks as well ahead of when we actually get our own review sample in a week or so. I've already been contacted by a couple of people asking if it's worth the upgrade, so I want to talk about that in this particular video and touch on my thoughts on the performance of the GPU. Before we delve into the actual architecture and the benchmarks, there are a couple of small points I do want to tackle. Point A, if you are considering overclocking, then you are probably best to wait and get the third party cooling solutions which are probably going to appear on the market in a couple of weeks time. And second thing, the GTX 1060 is also going to be on the market, at least according to rumours, in a couple of weeks time. Now, I'm not saying that buying the RX 480 now is a bad idea, but for those individuals who have a finite amount of cash and demand the best bang for their buck, it might just be a prudent option to say, eh, I'm just going to stick on the sidelines, wait to see how everything performs, and then go from there. With all of that said, let's talk about the architecture very briefly. So, it is the fourth iteration of the GCN architecture, so that debuted back in 2011. And honestly, much of the basic architecture is very similar, but there are numerous changes and additions which have improved the efficiency and performance of the design. In a very base overview, you've still got 36 compute units, which are the 2304 stream processors, one GCP, graphics command processor, four racers, two hardware schedulers, and also four geometry processors for each of the shader engines, 144 TMUs, and 32 ROPs. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, why is there a second hardware scheduler? Well, that's actually to do with asynchronous compute, and we'll get more into that in just a second. So, we've known for some time that AMD have been working with improving the their uh, efficiency of geometry engines and one of those is primitive discard accelerator essentially the idea behind this is it's going to cull triangles very early onto the pipeline and theoretically improve the performance of a scene by simply not having the gpu draw objects and uh, geometry which are just not going to be visible to the perspective of a camera AMD are also citing the key benefit is with tessellation, highly tessellated scenes. Now, it is worth noting that AMD are not ahead here of Pascal. They are simply getting to an even playing field because NVIDIA have had this type of technology for some time with uh, their Pascal uh, architecture. So it's good that we're seeing this. Now, whether you're going to see anything near what AMD are claiming in this particular... Um, in these particular graphs, well, that's down to you, but most likely these are very PRE numbers, so I wouldn't be super happy about seeing a 300% increase, because I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, geometry instancing, also very similar. It's been around since DirectX 9, and is good for reducing bandwidth. And the idea is to use multiple copies to represent, let's say, a bunch of trees or other such things, which could be at lo a large distances. And um, in terms of raw shader efficiency, you're looking at probably about a 15% improvement compared to an older generation GCN, which doesn't sound much, but when you start to factor in other improvements over the architecture of the card, it can definitely start making a nice bonus. So there are various things like improved uh, level 2 cache, support for native FP16 and int16, um, and improvements on pipeline stores by simply keeping the pipelines well fed. Now you might recall that there are two hardware schedulers on this card. From what we can understand, this is going to benefit asynchronous compute usage primarily. What it can do is basically push certain workloads to the front of the stack. So let's assume that there's a particularly time sensitive operation. Well then that can jump forward in the queue and something which doesn't necessarily have to be completed right now, this second, that can wait a moment. 
This might be very handy for something like warps with virtual reality or even audio because from what I understand true audio is now being computed through uh, compute units rather than having a dedicated chip um, like previous uh, Radeon cards. Enough with the technical talk, how many frames per second does it manage to hurl around your screen? Well the good news is early reports, early leaks, early benchmarks seem to be fairly accurate. For the most part the card sits around the GTX 970 to the GTX 980 levels. Or to put it into another context, the R9 390 to about the Nano. Now whether this is a good up watch you're upgrading from. So for the sake of argument, if you're coming from a GTX 760, maybe a 770, this is a really, really, really good upgrade for you. On the other hand, if you're already sitting on something along the lines of a 290, then you might want to not bother with this particular card and hold fire and save up for a little longer. For those wondering about overclocking, I've done quite a bit of research on it, and there are certainly some models which do go a bit higher. But really, you're going to want to wait for the custom coolers. The custom coolers are going to let you clock much higher clock speeds, maybe 14, 1500 megahertz. So if overclocking is really what you're focused upon, I would personally wait for the custom coolers to appear onto the market. And maybe even buy the GTX 1060 instead if it ends up being better because from what I'm reading the GTX 1060 and the custom coolers are going to be roughly appearing on the market at the same time. With all of that said and done, do I think that the RX 480 was overhyped? No, I actually think that this is one of those cards where it performed roughly at the levels we'd expect it. Some individuals were of course expecting it to beat the Fury X at stock, but that was no way going to happen. But I think that the custom coolers, when they finally arrive on the shelves and people do start to maybe create water blocks for them, I wouldn't be surprised if the GPUs could clock to insane levels and maybe possibly rival the Furies and the Fury Xs. But for the price point that you're looking at, two to 230 US dollars, honestly, this GPU is a steal. And once again, if you are coming from an older GPU, and maybe want to couple this with something along the lines of a, an i5 or perhaps an FX processor, you've got yourself a really good PC capable of 1080p, not a problem, and even up to 1440p without too much effort, which really is all we could ever ask for. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Um, bear with us because there's going to be a hell of a lot of news, reviews and other bits and bobs popping up on the channel as one can expect. Finishing a review at the moment of a processor, it's taking a lot longer than normal simply because I've decided to slightly redo how I put benchmarks together, primarily in the format of the, um, the graphs and other bits. So it's taking me longer, not because the editing's taking me a lot longer, but mostly because I'm fucking around a lot and trying to figure out what looks good on screen and represent things better. So, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Um, but with all of that said, we've got loads of other GPU reviews, CPU reviews, SSD reviews, and other bits and bobs popping up on the channel over the next couple of weeks. So do stick with us, and um, I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye.